Hello, welcome pen friends. Uh, this is a video that I've been wanting to do for quite a while and I'm finally getting around to it. It's going to be kind of a combination of uh, a collection video and a review because it is all about my Gen Hao X750s and uh, we're going to look at all these pens and I'll show you which nibs I have on them. Uh, they do take a standard number six nib. And uh, we're going to write with four of them, because four of them I have inked up. And then I'll tell you all about my likes and dislikes about the pen. So it's going to be more like a review. Um, but also, these are the seven that I have. So I was going to say that I don't have any other pen that I have that many of. But actually, I counted, and I do have that many of the... Uh, Jin Hao 159. I have that white one out for a purpose uh, because a pen friend gifted me a three set. Um, to, she was uh, so kind and, and there was a color way that I was looking for and it came in a three pack. So I did do end up, um, can't really say that, but I have these seven and uh, I do have some just regular pens we can compare it to. So let's go through these seven and I'll talk about them real quick before we start writing. Um, the first one, they're all Gen Hao X750s. This is the only one that I have with the gold um, trim. And I really, it's stunning and I really love it. It does uh, come up again though uh, as uh, something later on in the video. So <laughs> we'll, uh, this has the stock nib on it and it writes great it's amazing and so this is something i I've, I've had to slow down and learn that uh if if you're okay with a, a nice wet medium you don't really need to change the nib so that's cool people told me that right from the beginning but i was a little bit stubborn and also i was looking for broad nibs and stub nibs so it wasn't completely ridiculous what i was doing <laughs> that's my story anyway Okay, so the next one, and that is the reason why I have the uh, 159 out, is uh, kind of a cream color. I think it was sold as white, though. Coco, you stay there, hon. He's trying to climb up here, and it, it could be a disaster. Um, I have on this a Nemesine 0.8 nib because it's my favorite nib for brown inks. So <laughs> that's a little bit of a spoiler. But... Um, this compares in terms of color. See, it's not, um, of course, that white is going to probably knock our socks off. This is the white 159, and this is the Gen Hao. So it's more of a creamy color. But it, uh, someone, and I know you're probably watching this, so it's embarrassing that I, I go too quickly to kind of slow down and remember who said what, but it does happen to me quite a bit. I'm trying to get more mindful, but said they were using theirs with the brown ink and that's all it took for me to, you know, monkey see, monkey do, I guess. And so what a neat idea, because it does, this goes so well, well, with just about any color, but brown, yes, yes, I thought that was a great idea. So next up is one... Um, it's not my oldest one. My oldest one is the sh Shimmering Sands. This purple one I've had almost longer. I think the Shimmering Sands came first and then this one. And I have this outfitted with a, a Goulet medium nib. I'm thinking next of inking up a dark purple. And I just love a, a nice medium nib for that. Uh, should say while we're at it, they all come with their the converter. And you, or you could use the standard uh, short or long international cartridges. So I've never used a cartridge. I love the converters. These clean up really well and everything. So that's, of course, that's for later on the like list, I guess. Um, so that's what I have on that one. Okay, and then next up is one that, of course, it's an Instagram thing. I saw it on Instagram and I thought, oh, I just, I wanted to be able to put magenta and pink inks in a Gen Hao and really enjoy that matchy, matchy kind of feel. So I, I ordered this, I think I ordered this on eBay, if I'm not mistaken. It was either that or Amazon. I have gotten some of them at Goulet some at eBay and some at Amazon, and I get really mixed up. I know this one came from uh, Goulet. So this has a Goulet broad nib on it, a black one, and it's, it's gorgeous. It's, oh boy, it's a good writer. <laughs> they all are, actually. And I love being able to play musical nibs. That's one of my, the main features. 
Stay there, Coco. He wants to help. He's really excited, I think. And next up is the Shimmering Sands. Um, he's distracting me. <laughs> he's been quite the helper lately. My cat, Coco, for those of you who don't know. Okay, so on here I have a broad Yowo nib that came from Australia when I ordered one of my uh, serendipity pens. Uh, it's just one of my best broad nibs, so I like it for this. Okay, and then next up, this is uh, the, I think it's blue marble or something like that. And if I remember right, this was Amazon, but it's hard for me to remember. I do have a Goulet 1.5 nib on this. I tend to love seeing blue inks with a stub nib. So this has been almost permanent, except I did change it for when I was writing with Little Mo last month. Uh, diamine little mo and it was a uh, that was a cleaning that was quite the cleaning uh, process but anyway that's a <laughs> that's a side trip um, and then one of my other favorites uh, they're all kind of favorites for different reasons is the uh, silver one I just love this uh, it <laughs> it looks so luxurious um, and I have a, a Goulet silver broad nib on this one so uh, you could probably deduce that that's the draw for me. Uh, not only the fact that they're reliable and everything and they don't leak, or none of mine have done any kind of funny business, um, but I can put the different nibs on and I can really enjoy the ink the way I like to. So I think what we'll do is we'll write with the four that I have inked and then we'll, I'll come back to, you know, talking about all the stuff I like and and the very little bit that I don't like. <laughs> or the end, one thing that I didn't used to like and now I know better. So uh, be right back. Okay, for, this, for these writing samples, I'm going to use a Galen Leather Everyday book. It has 52 GSM Tamoy River paper. And I've been using it for practice and stuff like that um, outside of my regular hardcover ink journal. So we're going to start with the red pen, and it's got Sailor uh, Grenade in it. I just, I love this pen. It uh, really, really appealed to me, the red with the gold. And I just, I haven't seen whether they have a red with silver, but anyway, it's, I, and the fact when I, um, went to work with this one I couldn't get a regular Goulet nib into it and I didn't want to break anything or or hurt the nib so uh, that subject's going to come up again but I tried uh, I did not want the Nemesine nib on here which would also fit because I guess they're just slightly thinner so I just put the stock nib back on and and remembering what you all have already told me many people have told me that they're such good nibs and it's been excellent. I've been writing it with it in my daily journal and it doesn't even bleed through my, uh, uh, it's a little family, no, not family dollar, dollar general, $3 notebook and it's been fantastic. So of course, Jin Hao, X750 with a stock nib. I'm just gonna put, whoops, no, not stick, stock nib. I think they list them as medium, but if they don't, that's what it is to me. That's definitely what it feels like and looks like. And it's very smooth. I can see maybe I might uh, do just slight uh, micro mesh on it to get it exactly where I want it, but not until I've used a few inks to make sure. Um, but Sailor uh, Grenade is definitely a flowy ink, so. It, it's just perfect. As far as I'm concerned, there's a little bit of feedback, but it's nothing that I can't handle. So I'm extremely pleased with this. This could end up being one of those permanent uh, ink ups. You know what? I really liked this same ink in the only Mont Blanc I have, too, that was gifted to me. It has a little medium gold nib. So this is just fantastic. It's been really happy. I'm, I wonder <laughs> how I'm doing with ink halfway okay so I had that really full so that's good okay so the next one that I have inked right now is uh, yeah I don't know like I'm trying to decide which one to go with here we go we'll do the silver one next it is the the steel uh 
silver. I think that's how Goulet lists it. And I'm no telling what it said on my listing when I got this one because they're often not even listed as Jin Hao, but you can tell by what they look like in the listing that you're getting the right one. Okay, so it has dominant industry downpour and it's another, uh, it's a Goulet broad nib. So here we go. X750, Broad Goulet. Oh, I didn't write the ink name or anything up there. I just was talking, I guess. Downpour. This is a, a really neat uh, gray ink. Oh, that was a mistake. I'm going to X through that because, you know, but the pink fingers... <clears throat> Change the look of the ink. <laughs> That's better. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Gotta watch out for that. We don't want to be misleading that it's, uh, you know, got more complexity than it actually has. Okay, I'm going to go back in and at least uh, for my own reference later put in Sailor Grenade. It puts down a nice amount of ink. Just... I bet that's still drying. Yeah, that's really... Whoa, okay. I'm not quite sure where I'm at. I shouldn't try those tricks. <laughs> okay, so next up, we'll go with the, uh, the cream color one, I call it. The white pen. It's not actually white, but... With Pilot Orochizuku Horsetail Brown. Now, this came about just recently because... One, a lot of viewers had told me that this ink was being discontinued and I ought to get my hands on some. And when I recently received a, a donation to the channel, I thought, wow, that's just perfect. I can go ahead and, and look and see if I can find this ink. So that's what I did. And that's how I spent the, the $20 that, um, that I received unexpectedly. So this uh, pen has a 0.8 Nemesine nib on it and it like I said that nib is my favorite for brown inks for some reason it, it's just nicely rounded and yet it still can look stub like when you're writing and I, I love it and this combination is really good I mean I was wondering how it would compare to the Nemesine pen and it, it's it's perfect Well, wow, we're not doing much for the pretty handwriting. Okay, so horsetail brown. I don't know how to pronounce the actual um, word, but we'll go with that. And I was thrilled to be able to find some of this ink. Oh, the box, though. The box came through hideous. I was so nervous when I got it. Uh, the box was washed uh, that's sad but as long as i mean the ink didn't um leak so i'm i consider myself very lucky uh, and it was amazon i of course i don't know how they managed to mangle the box but they did horsetail brown ah oh, this is a gorgeous brown everybody that told me was right um yeah that was pretty accurate but let's make sure We'll use a non-inky thumb. Yeah, that's, that is really pretty. And it holds right up to my other experience with this nib, too. Oh, boy. I just really like that. Okay, so now we're going to look at what you can do in terms of with a stub nib. This is the blue marble one. And this is Inkybara Sea Blue, which I have in another pen. Uh, but I, wa I really wanted to see it in a stub. So here we go. Whoops. Things are not symmetrical, but... Okay, there we go. Oh my goodness, that's pretty. 1.5 Goulet. Nib, of course. <laughs> it's pretty dramatic. It really is. I, I love that. I can definitely see that I'll enjoy writing letters with it. Now, what else do I have that in? Oh, I have it in a, uh, 
I believe it, yeah, I have it in this, the Twisby Go with a broad nib. But this is pretty dramatic. <clears throat> we can compare it here in a minute. Okay, well, it'd be good to write the ink name. Inky Barra, Sea Blue. Ooh, nice. Okay, let's see. I think this is the right one. Let's do a scribble. No, it isn't. I have it in the, never mind, that was totally bogus. I have it in <laughs> the uh, Eco, not the Go. So, same ink, different pen. I guess I just have to see this just because Twisby Eco, supposedly abroad, but not quite. Um, transparent blue with Inkibara. Sea blue. Let's see if you're still able to see. Uh, nice, but you can see, you know, you just get that option, that that really cool option when you have these uh, Gen Hao X750s. And I know I don't, I don't have to convince anyone. I I know there are a lot of people already convinced. <laughs> So I'm more doing this video just for fun and for the fact that I looked back in my videos and I thought of all the pens, because this has consistently been one of my favorite pens, you know, for five years, I never did a review, <laughs> I don't believe, and, or maybe I just had it buried into a video that wasn't separated, you never know with me, but... Um, so I decided to do this. I thought it would be worth it because every day to my great joy new people come into the fountain pen hobby and so i mustn't just sit here and assume that everybody already knows what you can do with these pens and what you know um why it might be fun to switch nibs and have these number six nibs i actually keep um i keep my extra nibs in a little container and i've got a section for Goulet nibs. It looks like I might have put a Conklin nib though in there. It doesn't go there. <laughs> um, so I have, well that's not a Goulet either. So I have a, another stub for from Goulet and, and that is a little Caveco. Um, so I keep them in here and I can switch them and then these are all the stock nibs that I've gotten from Moon Man and Jen Hao. I have quite a few so if I ever want to learn how to do something with nibs, I've got some I can practice on. Um, okay, let's get into what I like and what I don't like. I probably already have said it, but I want to go about it organized now um, in case I left anything out. So the first thing is the beauty and the look of the pen. I, I truly love it. Um, it's just pretty. And then the second thing is the weight. It has a nice substantial weight, but when I write with it, I don't feel like... Uh, it's too heavy. I, I never post or anything. I, I don't know if you can. I don't like to, so I don't... Uh, yeah, of course you can, but it would be pretty heavy, I think. And I love the section. The, the section or the grip diameter is 10 millimeter, but it's just right. It's comfortable for me anyway. And then um, Next is the price. The price is in my zone so that I can have these colors that match up with the various inks, you know, that I like. And uh, also, like, I've got these two, the Shimmering Sands and the Silver are very neutral, so whatever, anything goes. And then I do love the matchy on the uh, purple, uh, pink, and the blue, even though this isn't a solid blue, I love it. Um, and then I think with this one, it's gonna be more neutral, where I can go with different colors that I think, you know, like even orange and brown and so forth. That's going to be wonderful. This is my newest addition to the seven pens here. And this was the one before that that was new, the red one. <clears throat> Some of these I've had a long time. Okay, um, so yeah, the price, they fall under $10. Uh, even at Goulet still, I saw nine eighty. I think. Uh, don't quote me because this is July... 19th 2022 and you could be watching this in the future <laughs> back to the future um but that's wonderful and i 
can't say what my least expensive was. I can't remember, but it was in the $5 ballpark and it would have been one I waited for to arrive from China. So, um, okay, I wrote down converter included. Yeah, okay, so, you know, and the converters are so good. They, they're easy to clean. I can, I've never had them really messed up. Of course, I probably didn't put, you know, um, Bay State Blue or... Um, King Philip in them, but everything else I've tried to to clean out, it doesn't give me the trouble that say a Lamy converter would. So that's amazing. And then they've just been so reliable. Um, really, I've either I've had just fantastic luck, or you know they're just really great pens because I've had nothing but good times with them. And then I wrote down easy care and maintenance because that's how I feel about a cartridge converter pen to begin with. It's just, um, it's kind of a relief over, I mean, certainly it's worth it to me to deal with, say, the, the Twisby Eco and the uh, Go and other pens where taking it apart is a little more complicated, but it's so fun and quick to uh, clean these. So and it's just nice to have... Uh, that as an aspect. So then I've got only two things over in the do not like category. And actually one of them I've outgrown. So let's talk about that one first. When I started out, I didn't, I didn't like the nibs. I thought that really I had to change all the nibs. I tested a few. Um, maybe it was more feedback than I wanted, but most likely it was simply that I like a broad nib. I like a stub nib mostly broad. So um, right away when I put a broad um, Goulet nib on my purple one, then it, it was a game changer. Right now it's a medium, but um, so I just kept doing that and I didn't uh, revisit even though people told me, and you're right, that these, stub ni uh, these stock nibs are not bad at all. So I used to feel like, well, okay, it's still under $25 when I would get a Goulet replacement nib. Um, and I bought the pen, so that still was wonderful. But uh, like this is just the evidence for me how well this one is writing. Um, I actually looked through all my stuff. I'm missing a, a, a cigar box right now. I've, I've put it somewhere and can't find it. That has some old X750s, I think, that have a lot of nibs on them. So hoping I can locate that. I don't know why I keep misplacing things, but. It's probably just storage. I try to clear my actual space where I'm working. So that's that, I call it now, I call it a bogus complaint because the nibs are fine. And also I could tune the nibs. So it's not like, <laughs> it's not like I can't slow down long enough to do that. But you probably noticed I had the stub nib. I had two stub nibs and some broad nibs, which that isn't how they sell them. They, they come with a stock nib and that's what you get. Let's see. Most of them came with one that looks like this, I think. Let's see if I can get the right one. Yeah, so most of them just came like this. Uh, pretty basic, and it looks like a medium nib to me. Um, I sell them right with a fine nib, but I do have a fine Goulet nib and a fine something else, Nemesine, I think. Okay, so... Okay, so this leads me to my only remaining... Uh, dislike on the Genhao X750, which is that two of them, I have had trouble, and that's these two, my most recent two, which is, seems kind of weird that that would be the case. When I would when, went to switch them out and put a Goulet broad nib, I just could not fit the nib in there, either together with the feed or by putting the feed first and then sliding the nib behind, which almost always works easily if you're having trouble. Um, now, the first few pulls, uh, when you pull the nib the first time, yes, it can be kind of uh, tight to get it out. And actually, it was Larry uh, at Larry's Fountain Pens that kept encouraging me, telling me, you can do it. Don't be nervous. You're not going to break them. And whoops. So I got, I got comfortable. The, the short story is I got comfortable with changing them. But I will tell you that when you first pull them, yeah, they're pretty tight and they do loosen a little over time, but they still remain pretty tight. And so this is what I use, the lobster band to pull the nibs. This was from uh, Chris Rapp 52, his uh, idea. And uh, 
so I, I am a little bit, you know, bummed about that because, right, but I wonder if as I pull these, the nib and feed the whole section thing out and clean them and put them back in, if over time these may loosen as well. At first I thought it was just going to be the gold one, but then the white one did the same. But even with the gold one, I was able to slide on a Nemesine uh, fine nib. I just didn't want a fine nib. And then this one, I definitely wanted the smaller stub nib because of the color. I wanted to put brown ink in here, uh, as someone else had mentioned. Uh, and I had that beautiful new ink to try out. So that's it. I mean, I sat here trying to, <laughs> you know, trying to get real with myself, trying to think is there anything else I don't like about them and there honestly isn't um, I have heard people say that they uh, chip and they look terrible after a while but I treat all my pens to uh, rickshaw sleeves and you know different uh, the Knox Sinclair case uh, this is my most used which is the the uh, rickshaw eight eight pen co uh, koozie koozie case roll whatever you want to call it and they get the royal treatment so I'm not saying that they would look the same after five years because I know I've had this one and this one for at least five years going on five years now so maybe they wouldn't look the same if I didn't treat them all as if they were expensive pens because when I came into the hobby uh, $10 for any pen or 15 was expensive. So, you know, I've, I've gotten a little desensitized now, but, but uh, I definitely want to take care of them. I don't want them to chip or anything, but I, I haven't had that happen. And they have maintained their beauty. So that's just my experience. You'll have to see, you know, what your experience may vary, you know, with the different factors that come into play. So I have a question for you before I end this video, which is getting on to almost 30 minutes. I noticed that I have another space here. <laughs> so what color do you think I should get? Um, to be honest, I don't even know what other colors there are. I did give away a solid black one to a young person, 13 years old. He was starting out in the hobby. I sent him some things and that was one of them because that was the one I wasn't going to miss, even though, you know, maybe I do. But uh, what color do you know about that I don't know about? I'd, I'd like to hear because over time, uh, these are definitely pens that I would consider if it's a color I'm going to use a lot. Probably my most used are these two and this one, but still these two also. And now I've got my newcomers, so... Okay, hopefully this wasn't too jumbled. Definitely trying to combine a collection video with a, with a review makes it a little longer. I'll put the specifications, measurements that I do have in the description box. Um, and I want to hear what you have to say about these Gen Hao X750s. They are my favorite of the Gen Hao's. They are my favorite Chinese uh, pens. Um, okay. I'm saying that, but I'm also then thinking I really love my little minis, and I use those too, the Wonkai Moon Man minis. So I better be careful about my big proclamations, but definitely, um, definitely they're my favorite gin house. Let's keep it there. That way I can be completely honest and literal in every sense. You know, I have to do that. So <laughs> I will see you on the next video, and thank you for watching. If you made it through this whole video, Yay, thank you. <laughs> Bye for now.